Good morning and welcome to Catch the Valley Church. I hope you all have a good week. I hope somebody's been blessed since last week, hopefully. Right, fire announcement. Um, if the fire alarm goes off in the hotel for any reason, can put it on the through the door to my left and please go down the stairs and come and meet outside and front of the building. So, one of his staff say, put them back in. Okay. There are no toilets on this floor. The ladies and gents are on the ground floor. And as you know, turn left out of the lift. Uh, gents are downstairs and the ladies are just a little bit up the stairs. But there is a disabled one down at the basement where you come out to go to the cars. Okay. Uh, if you have arrived by your car, please make sure that you register it because if you don't, you will get a nice fine from the Oregon Inn when you are at the box. Not from the Holiday Inn. Well, from the car parking company, yeah. So just make sure that you make sure you register your car when you come upstairs. Today's series will be recorded live on Zoom and shown on our media outlets. So please put your mobile phones on silent. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We are blessed. How are you, baby? How are you, baby? Caroline. the opening reading is the whole of Psalm 119. <laughs> it's uh, Psalm 119, 1 to 16. We're going through. Mm. Going through. Yeah, just put it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll not do it all today. We'll yeah. do it all for the next oh. So Psalm 119, I'll read from 1 to 16. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. And who seek him with all of their heart. They also do no wrong. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were established to keep your statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I have my focus on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not completely abandon me. How shall a young man keep his way to it by keeping it according to your word? With my whole heart I seek you. Do not allow me to wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes, and with my lips I declare all the decrees of your youth. I rejoice in the way of your testimonies, 
and as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and keep my ways on your way, and I will delight in your statues, and I will not get your word. I will I will start off with um, a lot of a lot of them in church that I have issues with the eyes and the last and the last me um that has brought me back home. Amen. And thank you, Lord. I feel the power inside of me. It's always been there for a long time. Yes, I run away. But I'm back. Amen. And I ain't going anywhere. Saint and Philip, I will see you. And it's, it's the most wonderful thing, and I would recommend it to anyone, regardless of how you feel, regardless of, of your religion, your beliefs, your gender. Um, even, even your sexual orientation, God loves you, and He doesn't care what you think you are or who you are. He loves you for you, and that is one of the most important things to know. You will never find anyone who loves you more. And, uh, I shall go back to what I was talking about. So on Monday, I went to the auditions for a, a, a review of my capture of my latest operation. And I was hoping that, oh, everything would go fine. No. Lord has other plans. So there was an inflammation on my eye. They weren't happy about it. So. On Tuesday, I went to the local hospital to see the hearing career as well as I said. So, yeah, I know inside and out where I am. Anybody ever wants to go to that night for me? Just me, I'm not saying this. And I saw that I had a hundred and a half attacks. I was like, oh no, 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 well, I'm going to go, okay, I've got to go at the eye test, and I went back to my eye drops, and I went to the scans, and then eventually I went to see the lady doctor, and she spoke to me, she said, I'm going to give you some eye drops for the, for the right eye, that should help well, I'm going to put you to the the left eye, so that's good news for me, then eventually, I might be able to get back driving and praise the Lord for that. And also to be out there praising the Lord for you and encouraging other people that this is the best thing you can ever do. It's just the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to be liked by the world. What does that matter? No. The, the love that you get and the fellowship that you get from people who are the same as you outweighs that totally. And you see differences in their 
in the way that you look at things in the world and you think, no, I don't like them, no, no, that's not for me. And you just say to the Lord, but tell me, you know, show me what to do, and I'm going to do it. So that was, uh, that was that week, and then it was my best friend, and it was sister of this church as well, it was her birthday on Friday, and we, I did a, a tea party. Um, I know that she needed it, and she left my out of the world, and I know that from the from, from, from the Lord from God. And then, unfortunately, she uh, the tire that's been uh, the the tire that she that they've been pumping up went. But as she uh, texted me yesterday and said. It was God doing this because we're going away on Tuesday. Um, if that had happened when we were on the next way, yep. it would have been a lot harder. And I to praise the Lord for that, that He was protecting all of us, protecting my sisters and protecting, uh, and protecting us for Tuesday to say, no, we're going to be in your fire. Last thing I would like to talk about is that um, I've, I've always wanted to sponsor a child um, who's um, who's in need of um, financial support or in helping to get them out of poverty. So uh, a couple of months ago. I guess on the side, and I was looking through sponsoring these children, and I chose this little girl. It happens to be her birthday today, and then uh, she looked so sad, and I just wanted her to smile. And I feel happy that I'm able to help her and her family. And hope, hopefully one day she will get her dream. She wants to be a doctor. And, um, and I just I just know that if I can help her a little way, then that helps me and that helps other people to remember. Sometimes it's best to give, not wanting anything in return. But just because giving gives you so much happiness. And the last thing I would like to say, it was lovely, lovely on Wednesday to see Hazel go to uh, the exercise club that my mum's been going to for a long time. And I hope she continues to go because she will benefit from that. And and maybe she might even, you know, my mum might even persuade us to go to the widows. Let's look that too. To enable Hazel to get out, meeting new people, and enjoying life. I will, I will stop now. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, I just want to Caroline. I you want to I didn't tell him that what I did. I didn't know that. 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 I didn't know
I just wanted to correct you on one item. <laughs> the Bible says that the Lord also can be correct. correct. So when we are ever being corrected, take it if it's done in the right way. Mm -hmm. Take it as a positive and not a negative. That's correct to me all the time. So he loves me a lot. But he said that when you have your other eyes on, you may be able to drive. You will be able to drive. Don't have any doubt when you're confessing things over yourself. You have to believe that you, you've got a problem with your eyes have got worse in the last few weeks. Let's just make sure we know. It is not God that is doing that. It is the enemy that is trying to stop you from reading the word of God, trying, trying to stop you driving so that you can you can't get anywhere so that you can spread the word of God. So Certain things to think about the time, yeah, God may have done that. Um, but a simple rule, simple rule is all good and perfect things come from the Father of Life and Love. Amen. It's James, I'm not sure, I think it's 517 or 117, 517 anyway. That's the brain will confirm that. But the father, all good and perfect things come from the father of life and God. God does not put sickness on people. God does not put illness on people or bad things on people. Yes, bad things happen. Sometimes they happen because people make bad choices instead of good ones. But God's all there. And we we have quick testimony. We have in America, when we went to see wedding, back to see my husband, and we were trying to find a hotel, and we'd been up for over 20 hours, 24 hours, and we were trying to find a hotel in the middle of a big city, couldn't find it anywhere, no one knew where it was. But I just got out of the crowd, pulled on the thing back up there, I said, Lord, we need help, I'm tired, I'm tired, I've got to go to bed. Helpful. And you can do that. You can do that. I mean, it's, if your son or daughter did that to you, what would you do as a parent? As soon as I turned around, big van pulled in. And I thought, thank you. <laughs> I thought it was a tactic, so I thought, oh, he's going to know. He wasn't. On the back, it is got something something yeah. back this year. Thank you. Thank you. And he got out of the car, he was a colored guy, and he was walking. I said, I see you're a Christian then. He says, Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pastor. I said, Yeah, I am too. I'm from England. Oh, yeah. And then I shocked him. I said, do you realise you're an answer to a prayer? <laughs> so I explained everything to him. <clears throat> and when he, he I didn't realise it, but he, he stopped to get some money out of this. He didn't even look like a bank, but he got some money out. And he drove up, as we followed him. He didn't even go where the hotel was. So he put it in his back now. And he took us all the way around. We followed him all the way around till we got to the hotel. And he drove us into the hotel. I drove behind him. I got, I said, thank you. I said, here's $50. Take that. Because we believe in blessing people. We get blessed, we believe in blessing people. You won't take it. Oh, no, it's all right. I said, no. I said, you have blessed us. You're a narcissist, uh, you've blessed us, and now we're going to bless you. 
that he was put in the church or keep it in personally himself. I don't care what, what he's taking. We need to put it up. Well, that was an answer to prayer. God is always there. He just needs a healing. And sometimes he'll. What's that guy an angel? I don't know. The Bible says that you, you, I'm not sure the exact word, but um, you, you see angels and you don't realize it. That's basically. Same angels without knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the word ghosting or something like that. Yeah. But um, what's in that? I don't know. But it's certainly a miracle because we finally got to that. Around, around. Yeah. So and the best thing was, as we came over this bridge, it was first right. So we drove straight into the middle of the city and it was right on the edge. But we didn't know. I said, Do you get that scripture? Yes. And it is one, uh, sorry, James one. chapter 117. Yes. And I, will read, I, will re I will read it all. Yes, please. Because sir. 17 and 18, I think, are. Uh, yeah. Every good, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he bought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You're coming on the cross. You feel confident, you feel more natural in front of the church. I know there's only people that have changed, so don't worry about that. But now you need to add the word to what you're saying. And me and Pastor Graham were talking earlier about the, the saints and, and their saints, something the Lord put on my heart. That would be great uh, for you to actually do something. You know, pray about it, ask the Lord if you want me to do something, what it is. And then just use that time to come here and minister to us because we are like getting ministered to I'm not ministered. So, you know, you do great care of life and you it's really good to it's heartwarming to see someone actually start to want to develop in the same way that we developed over the years. Because that's why we're here. Well, it's been uh, a strange week. Um, I'm not going to say it's up and down because. Every problem is an opportunity. And I've come to learn that it's, it, it's been difficult. Um, Chrissy uh, sends a lot of and, 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 and uh, you know, really wants to be here with us. Um, at the moment, something's happened to a knee. We think it may be an insect bite. And they've swollen very badly and it's very painful. Um, <laughs> she'll see it. <laughs> no, but uh, it really is strange that the stronger we get as a couple and uh, in the Lord, the more the enemy throws at us. Like, like you, Caroline. And it's quite simple. The devil doesn't care about everybody else out there. Because there is already. It's the saints he wants to get to fall away. And then go, look how good am I? And he isn't. Because he only has the power we let him have. 
and that's where Chrissy and I are fully uh, in agreement. And you know, she's um, she's she can be, shall we say, forthright and stubborn. <laughs> Um, I tell her to rest and get some ice on it, and she goes, yeah, yeah, the next thing I know, she's bouncing around doing stuff for other people, and then she wonders why it hurts. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it's an interesting time for us, because you know, we know that God will bring us together. And we're patient and waiting for that to happen. And we know He will uh, provide all the funds uh, for visas, flights, uh, accommodation. We just trust Him. Don't we are living in faith? We're living by faith. Not living in faith. We're living out of faith, which is different. Because you live. In fact, you walk by faith and not by sight. That's what I want to say. What is the you can say about the um, faith? This is one of my favorite scriptures. Um, if you got your Bible, what is the book here? You got this book here. Uh, That's the one, it's going to be lost of that. Um, go to the New Testament and to the book of Galatians. <laughs> And um, verse 20. Watch it. And it says. What chapter? Did I not say? I no. don't follow that. No. You just said, you just said Galatians. And yeah, then verse. Yeah. I thought that was the You said chapter 2. Galatians chapter yeah. 2. And verse 20. This is all talking about himself. Mm. He's talking about himself, means once he was born again, he was talking about us. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, this is the point, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. We have the faith in the Son of God. Amen. The problem is, we don't actually believe it. I do. We think it's our faith. But we, according to that scripture, and there are other scriptures that confirm that, it's not just taking out the um, contacts. Um, we have the faith. Of the Son of God. And when Jesus prayed, he got everything that he prayed for. Apart from one time, when there was so much unbelief in his own hometown, he couldn't do any mighty words. And that's because they all thought of him as being the carpenter's son instead of the Messiah. What he said was, a prophet is without honor in his own town. Yep. Why? Because they all recognize him as who he was. Not who he is. Him. And that's exactly the same with my family, to a certain extent. Because they all know me as who I was. They don't know me as pastor. But God's changing that round. We've got any... Any... Do you want to have those in? We've got 
So you've got the doctors on the left of September yeah. for the results for that and you know, that. Mm -hmm. So that's just your local GP. It's not the it's it's not the hospital you've got to go to. No, the the, the GP. Yeah. Don't worry. Put the X-rays and things sent back yeah. to the surgery. In that, in that case, don't worry about it. Yeah. No, no, that's the good thing. That is the good thing. It can't be very, very yeah. good. It send you straight up. And it wouldn't be the doctors, it'd be the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it can't be urgent. Praise God. Praise God. Good. Good to go to the doctor. The doctor, the doctor, the doctor. We'll pray over that. We'll pray. You're all right. And I have been praying, which is an answer to prayer. That you get an uh, opportunity to have your other idol uh, come along. So don't let the negative affect the full positive. Yeah. Look, we'll get it right. So we'll make sure of that. And um, so that's anyone else. Neither was Christina. Yeah, we need to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I pray the Karen. You watch. I know, Madam. You cry. Ladies would say, How would the night be? What on how would it? You go look at it. All right, well, you got it. Yeah, so I was corrected by Mr. Grace on Friday. I'll tell the Lord. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, let's pray to see the interpretation. Yeah, I'm the first thing, no one seems to have done it. Well, the mind about that day. I've been using that. You know, it's a very good thing. That's anointed, anointed oil. Well, that's where the lady had the cancer, so they knew. You see, okay. Well, it's well. Mm -hmm. That's because we need something to we're not in there now, are we? Anyway. Okay. And so we anoint you with oil as scripture tells us. We, we pray. We do not pray for a healing. We declare your healing in the name of the Lord. And when you go uh, on the 11th of September to the doctors, uh, the results will be negative, but they will say that you will be able to have your hip done in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we stand on that, Lord. And we come into agreement with what Pastor uh, Graham has said, and we just thank you according to your word. Romans says that Romans 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, Hazel will get a good report about the health in Jesus' name. And everyone who's in agreement said, Amen. 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 Amen.
Let's just say it. We say to that, to the eye problems, be gone. Just like uh, Jesus did, he healed the blind. He made the blind see. He made the lame walk. And he will do the same for you. For you believe and you are a child of God. And we pray for you in the name of Jesus. And we claim that healing and we say you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor Graham was praying that I just had the, the image of Acts 2, no, Acts 9, where Saul had, was blinded and the scales fell from his eyes and helped him to see more clearly than he'd ever seen in his life. Father, we just pray right now that the scales, the whatever is stopping um, Car Caroline from seeing properly, that they, they scales will fall off, they will be taken up. Whatever way they come off, it will result in not only no infection in either eyes. I speak against that right now in the Jesus name. All infection will clear up in Jesus' name on her right hand. Um, there will be no infection in the left eye at all. We come against that. And Lord, we just pray that you will return to her, her sight not as it was, but as it should be, 2020 vision in the name of Jesus. The Lord, we just stand in agreement that this will be done sooner rather than later. We thank you that Caroline's got the opportunity to have her left eye done, mm -hmm. and we just thank you for that, Lord, answer to prayer. But now we expect boldness in Caroline's eyesight, wholeness in her eyesight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray over Caroline and Karen and um, Gracie as they go on this trip, Lord. Give them a safe trip. Protect them from your angels around that vehicle in the name of Jesus. Help uh, Caroline. Sorry, help Karen. To be able to drive without pain with no problem whatsoever and she can control the vehicle in in full control of that vehicle and they will go away they will have a blessed time and they will return back to their homes safe sound and accident free in jesus name amen 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 Father, we just pray over Christina. Lord, you're not affected by time or distance. Mm -hmm. So we know, Lord, that in the same way that you have touched these two ladies here today, you are touching the knee of Christina. And Father, we just we just ask your Holy Spirit just to start to soothe that knee of all pain. Mm -hmm. Take all pain from that joint and Jesus' name, and I command the swelling in the name of Jesus to, to rescind and to go away, and that knee will return to its normal shape, its normal size. It will have no pain, and Lord, we expect a powerful um, statement of what has happened next week when we all come together that the healing power of almighty God is not affected by time and distance but can touch any heart, any person in Jesus' name by faith. Amen. Amen. I'll just tell you a quick story that is related to what we just prayed for. God isn't restricted to us being here, yeah. The Bible says the anointing says to lay hands on them. That, that's great. If you can do it, you can. What do you do? Oh, well, he's over there. I can't do it. Then I won't bother. Oh. Oh. I got a phone call a few years ago 
through a pastor in Kenya. And he said, his son has been ill for many days and he has been taken into hospital. And Pastor, you all know, they don't go into hospital easily in the foreign country because they rack up big bills. And obviously, this was a pastor who had three children and his son got that bad. He was, um, he had malaria and something on the chest. Yeah. That's it. Perculosis. He had malaria and pneumonia and they took him in. And I was walking home and he rang me. I said, where's your son now? He said, He's in hospital. I said, where are you? He said, we're in the room with the doctor. I said, right. Put the phone to his ear. And he did. And I prayed a prayer like that. Lord, we're not having this, blah, blah, blah. Went through it all. Took about five minutes. He put it on speaker so that not only the little light of hear it for him and the doctor. And um, they rang me up 24 hours later. He was lying on the bed as if he was almost dying. 24 hours later, he was sitting up on the floor next to the bed playing with his toys. That's the power of God. The maximum through faith. The faith of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I've got testimony. I just walked into Craig downstairs. I left the toilet. I thought, Craig. And so all the hotel will be taken over from tomorrow. Somebody called. I know. I know. Somebody. I know. I hope, I hope, I hope, it's something like that. Yeah, I hope, I hope. I said, Craig, where are you going? I said, Chesterfield. He says, no, I'm going to Chesterfield. He said, I said, here, Lord Davis, yes, I'm about to say, well, I'm going to be down to death. We're in there doing something. He says, he says, I'll pass all the information over from the church on to them. And they'll probably give me a link. The company. New company. The company that are taking over. Money up. That'll be the first thing they do. Yeah, just now we're going to Yeah. Yeah. This is the other that Sean needs to speak to me. Okay. And they're taking over from Mother. Explains a lot. Well, I can't agree. Still, still, yeah. I found out that um, Ellis. But well, apparently, they're not told it. They're renting it. The company is renting, and it's not IGH, but it's some other company. They're renting it to them. Now, whether they rent it to them or for a few to possibly buy it at the yeah. end. Let's bring uh, our friends this morning. 
God will release his blessings. Not only are you building a memorial for God through your offerings, which will be rewarded one day in heaven, but God will also release his blessings back into your life now on this earth. Your offerings are a remembrance before God. He has not forgotten you. He knows your faithfulness and your commitment to him. God is faithful to fulfill his word and will supply you with whatever you need. Many Christians today are weary and well doing. They are discouraging their giving because they somehow feel that their offerings are not significant. Remember that one of the laws of the spiritual harvest is that we will reap. If we do not give up, do not become weary in your giving. Keep giving freely and generously, knowing that the hour is late and that your offerings are recorded as a memorial on your behalf. The principalities that God established regarding the sacrifices and offerings under the Old Covenant reveal important keys concerning how he expects us to worship through our sacrifices and offerings. What sacrifices does God expect you to give to him today? Let's go and give our times and offerings. Oh God, we just thank you for these time and nothing to our God. Thank you, people that have given in here this morning that are glad and are joyful heart. And we just thank you that we'll receive a wonderful return of these signs and offerings this, this morning, God. And we just thank you that one of us will get blessed this coming week in Jesus' name. And we thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to be talking today about I did the first part of this. We prayed about everything a few weeks ago, and then the Lord put something on my heart to preach that week, and I did do this one. So I know we're actually going back. But it's all good stuff. It's all the word of God. And it's all about giving you guys knowledge. What do you do with that knowledge is down to you? But that's what we're here for. So I want to talk about prayer. Pray about everything. What's up by asking a simple question? How is your prayer life? Good, thanks. Good. <laughs> That's good. Well, I thought you wanted an answer. <laughs> no, it's a question for everyone to ask in their hearts. Is it as good as it should be? Should it be better? Always. Always, exactly. Um, If it's done right, 
that it is aligned. A lot of people think that prayer is um, boring and, you know, you just give a list to God and that's it. Prayer is about communication. If you're born again, you've got the communicator, which is the Holy Spirit within you, which will make the spiritual connection so that you can hear God. If you're not born again, you haven't got it, full stop. So it will be boring because you are not able to hear what God tells you. When God speaks to you, he will tell things to you that you will remember for years and years and years. I'm sure Pastor Graham's got things where he spoke to him two years about it, and he's never forgot it. And it's like it's within your spirit, and it's always there. James, five seventeen. Five eighteen. Romans ten nine. Long time. Ephesians two eight. Okay, James 4, 3, anyway. It's there, I've seen it. There it is. Ah, it's me. Oh, James 4, 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask to me. You may spend it on your own passage. Well, first of all, it says you ask. You were talking about that terrible one I'm doing. The fact that you need to act for the things that you want from God. But you do not receive. Why not? God doesn't want to ask you. Oh, that's my Bible. That he does want to bless you. You ask a miss, in other words, you ask the wrong way. So that means there is a way of asking for something from God in a correct way. Then you may spend it on your passage. So it's not all about you. It can be about you, but not all. There are all kinds of prayers. There's the prayer of faith, the prayer of the dreamers. There's the prayer where you bind and loose it, which we, we view before now. There's the prayer of intercession, where you're praying for someone else, like we've done today. Uh, there's the prayer of petition, which we all know about, the prayer of supplication, the prayer of consecration and dedication, the prayer of worship, your worship. There are rules for these different kinds of prayers, and we must learn to pray correctly. You have to learn to pray correctly. The Bible is your handbook to pray. That's how you learn how to pray. Never go to church or a prayer meeting without it. I have never gone to a church meeting or a prayer meeting without my Bible in 20 odd years. Why? Because it's the word of God. And sometimes, even if I'm not ministering, even if I'm just going to sit there, God can still speak to me through it. Through some, what someone said. Check so and so the Oh, yeah, see what I mean. If you don't have it, you ain't got it. Always carry your Bible to the church. Always, because your word that you have is, is Jesus. The word was made flesh, 
So, why are there rules? Simply because there are rules because prayer is powerful. And <laughs> anything that is powerful, it has to be regulated. There are many things that are powerful that have to be regulated in the natural world. In the supernatural world, it's the same. You have to regulate the power of prayer. Make sure you use it in the correct way. This is how powerful it is. This is taken from the Amplified Bible. Okay? Elijah was a humble being with a nature such as we have. We feel with feelings, afflictions, and uh, things. Constitution. Thank you. That's what I was reading. That's better. Constitution. Like that. Uh, in other words, he was just like us. Okay. That's what we're saying. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain, and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. No rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and the heavens supplied rain, and the land produced its crop. That's the usual. So he prayed for no rain, and it didn't rain for three, three and a half years. Then he prayed for some rain, and it said it rain. Why did he pray for no rain and some rain? Why didn't he just leave it with no rain? Because God told him. He heard it from God. God said, now I want you to pray for rain. And that's what happened. That is how powerful it is. The powerful prayer of a Christian can change the situ any situation that you're all dealing with. Any situation. Prayer is the right kind of prayer prayed in the right way delivers the power that you're believing for. Praying incorrectly in the wrong way to observe this, the power of prayer. Prayer must be powerful because we're so dependent on it. We slip through a few of these. Our salvation. How do you get saved? You pray the prayer to God, to ask him to forgive your sins and let you become a part of his family. You've all done that. Romans 10 and 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's simple, it's not hard. It's very simple. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh. You pray forever, you believe in your heart. You have to believe in your heart. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you are saved through faith. Faith. And and this is not of yourself, it is a gift from God. Salvation is a gift from God. He gives it you. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to receive it. You've just got to say, thank you, Lord, I receive it. For it is by grace that you are saved. Verse 9. Not of work, so that no one should boast. Oh, well, I got saved in because I'm so good. You got saved because Jesus died for your sin, because you're a sinner. But you turn to God. No one's good enough to save himself. John 3 16. 
Well, God so loved the world that he gave. No, that God gave. And he didn't just give something, he gave the very best that he could give his son, his only begotten son. His only begotten son, so that whosoever believe on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But it doesn't stop there. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, that's what many people think. Mm. Oh, God sent Jesus to show how perfect he was, and we can't live up to it. No, he sent it so that not to condemn the world, but that through the world, through him, he might be saved. The standard Jesus had is for us to try to reach for in our normal life. Not to condemn us and say, you're not living to this standard. God say, your standard is below Jesus, but with my help and the Holy Spirit, your standard can come up to Jesus. You'll never be as perfect as Jesus, because Jesus never sinned. We were born with sin before we even started. So, our salvation. The harvest of souls. How important is that? Some people that don't know Jesus about him. That's so important. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then said to the disciples, This is Jesus, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest. That he will send laborers into his harvest. We need to pray for people that will come in and, like you, Caroline, that will come in, learn of God, and then go out and start telling people of God in the harvest. I know we all do that, but the more that you get people into the harvest, we need to pray for people that will do that, that will go out. Because we're all called to do that. Verse Timothy. So, therefore, I exalt first of all that you make supplication, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving for everyone. For the blood that guy down the road, he's a real pain, he's horrible. He's horrible. For everyone. We're not told to like people, we're told to love them and to pray for them. For, king, for kings and for all who are in authority, that we, this is the reason, that we may live a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. We told to pray for the the kings and people in authority, so that we can have a quiet life. The last thing we've seen in the last few weeks and months is a quiet life. It's been totally destructive. It's been evil. But that is what is happening and will continue to happen. But we are to have peace. A peaceful life, how do you get that? By having the Prince of Peace in your life. What was that? He desires all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of truth. God desires everyone to be saved, to come to the, the true knowledge of truth. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died on the cross for the sins of all the world, and that He was raised again by His Father in heaven, so that we could receive salvation. That's the truth in a nutshell. But people don't know it. There is one God. And one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. 
there was only one mediator. What's that mean? There's only one person between you and God, and that's Jesus. When I was brought here up in the Catholic Church, there was me, the priest, Jesus, and God. I was so far away from God, I thought, hey, because I had to go to someone else. And he gave me absolution for my sins. He did die on the cross. Jesus is. Jesus is the only one who can mediate between you and God, because he's the only one who paid the price for your sins. And then, The God of this world The God of this world was blind blind in the eyes of those who did not believe black and white and the glory of God's God. Who is the image of God? Who shines on that? The God of this world. Notice it's a small king. In the King James, when it's referring to God as an almighty God, it's a capital G. Every time we see a small G, it's talking about Satan, God of this world. He has blinded the eyes of the people so they can't see the glorious light of the gospel. But guess what? We have had those scales removed. We have seen the glorious light of the gospel. And we have not only seen it, we have responded to it. So, um, all this is from God, who was reconciled in force to himself, through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation with the platform. Okay, so. Satan is trying to blind and stop people seeing the truth of the gospel. But we, as born again believers, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. It is our job to go forward and tell people that God loves them, as you did today, Caroline. Because they don't know that. They think God is just wants to punish them. And God can be a whole time. But he's not. He is totally in love with every person. He's not in love with what every person does. Because he can allow sin to come into the kingdom of God. That's why you have to be born again. You have to be cleansed. To be spirit is sealed. But then, Psalm 86 in verse 5. All you, Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. All those who call upon you. We just read earlier. That God wants everyone to come to him. But not everyone will. People will reject God. They will reject Jesus. And verse 18 in John 3, chapter 3, actually says that they are condemned already because of their own denial of Jesus. So, 
Cleveland. Romans 6, 23. The relation to sin and death. For the gift of God is the sin of the Lord through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not to what's happening, but that is completely different from my criticism that I've got. That's what you're going to see, because it's not. So, Matthew 18, 21, now Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall we forgive our brother to sin against us? Up to seven times. Peter thought he was doing well when he said that. No, he was like, Jesus said, No. In other words, 7,007. Jesus said, I do not say unto you seven times, but 70 times seven. In other words, you have to forgive people continuously all the time without forgiving, you will not be forgiven. That's what Jesus said. You have to forgive, otherwise you will not be forgiven. So, I wonder what Peter thought when he heard that. It's probably trying to count on what how many is that. Well, if we go one over that, then I don't have to forgive them. That's not the one point of Jesus. I've heard people say that. I think 70 times 70 is, I don't know. 500 or something, or 400 or something. And they said, well, if he's one over that, then I don't have to forgive him, because we've done the seven times. 490. Okay. So if you do five hundred. Seven Seven is a 49. Right, thank you. Times the 10, 490. <laughs> if we do 491, then you don't have to forgive him. Yay! That's not true. You have to continue to live to it, and that's what you say. And why do you have to forgive people? Because it's as harmful to you as it is to them. The hatred that you have within you, but then you often it won't affect them at all. But when you have released that hatred and shown them that love, then you not only free them. Although they don't know it, but you're freeing yourself from all that pain. I've got a clue what's coming in there. What's the Ephesians 1 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he gave us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Now, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, what we're going to be talking about today. Be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We all know that. If Jesus' blood hadn't been spilled, we would never have been saved. And the forgiveness of sin. That's why we have to forgive people. Jesus forgave our sin, our sin. His Father in heaven forgave our sin. So how can we possibly hold anything against anyone else? If we've already forgiven. It, there's a story about the um, the guy who owed, owed money to his master. And he said, if you don't pay me, I'll throw you out. And he threw himself on the floor. He said, Lord, I'll pay you. Just give me time. And he felt so sorry for him. He, he said, Forget it, go. Oh, we'll have a debt. Then he went to someone else and he said, You owe me all this money. If you don't pay me, then I'll have you thrown in prison. And he wanted to throw him in prison. And he, his friend, friends found out about it and they told the, the, the big box guy. And he said, I forgive you, Lord. Why didn't you forgive him? It's not right for us to be forgiven for our sins, 
and then you must to give any more help to the students from the beginning school. Whether you've done it or not, it's immaterial. It's whether they actually, whether we actually can give them for it. Which is lavish part of in all words is an insight. Proverbs. Proverbs 1 verse 2. There's no wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. What's that all about? That's the whole book of Proverbs. If you actually read verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, it explains that the whole book of wisdom. Proverbs is to as a wisdom and instruction to people so that they can live godly lives and learn from the mistakes that other people make. So I, I think we'll have to go all that day because I have no idea what that is. It's nothing like what I was going to be doing. So, well, it's sad, it's sad enough, but we try and think. So trying to get back to where I've been all over the place, my apologies for that. Technical error for some reason. Um, right. No matter how much you do it, you can do it more. One, one of the scriptures I have is it talks about First Thessalonians 5. It talks about praying as not ceasing in prayer, but to pray continuously in prayer. How do you do that? You can't be on your knees for four hours a day. You've got jobs to do, you've got things to do. You can talk. You can talk. As if you were talking to someone walking alongside you. Well, I know I've got work today, but with a guy I don't like, you need to take friends to deal with him. That's right. Now, if you hear him say you need to love him and be careful of him, then you hear him both ways. Friend is two way communication. It's not a single way. If it's a single way, you're not doing it right. You have to hear it from God. But you have to learn how to hear it from him. And the first thing is by getting the word of God inside of you. That's where it's at. Not of the The word of God is a seed. And the seed is planted in the soil of your heart or in your spirit. So it goes into your spirit and into your heart. And then when you need it, when you're under pressure, it then comes into your mind. The Holy Spirit is a comforter and he will bring things to your remembrance. You can only bring the things that you need to your remembrance when you have actually already been in. To bring it back to your remembrance, you must have remembered it at the time. So, keep the word of God with you when you go to prayer meetings and church meetings. Don't be ashamed of it. Can I just say, mm. not just prayer meetings or church meetings, Constantly, whenever you're out, have a Bible with you. I was just about to say that. I'm still saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Don't be ashamed to carry a Bible. What's that you carry? It's my Bible. So you know, I'm going to go to be Christian to carry. I am, and I'm proud of it, and I love Jesus. On the back of my car, it says, Jesus loves you. When I put that on, well, I'm going to need the trouble of this. Don't matter, I'm doing it. 
stand up for whom you are and what you are. You're a child of Almighty God. The communication comes from your heart and your spirit. But without the Word of God, you'll never get to hear it properly. The Word of God is the seed. And then you, once you start to plant it and water it, then you'll start to get the things you need out of it. And prayer between you and the Holy Spirit and your Father in heaven will help you to change not only your life, but it will help you to change other people's lives. And people will notice a difference in you. Um, Pastor Sean has decided that due to the lack of interest in the Alpha course, it will not be taking place until further notice. It's, right. it's been cancelled. Okay. Can I just say it? Just sat down. Really? 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 Yeah, um, I'm going to say this very, really quickly. Caroline, I know you want to do that. Um, and I'm sorry that we're not doing it, but the um, yeah, expense of hiring the room and the meal. For one person, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so that's one reason. Second reason is basically God's been speaking to me about focusing on the church and nothing else. Um, I was telling Pastor Ray, there's a saying that I think most of you know. Jack of all trades and left of them all. We're trying to, I'm not sure. we're trying to do as much as we can without establishing the church. And we've got to change that. We've got to establish the church and then move out. And so things, things will probably be changing over the next few weeks. I've talked to Pastor Dre about some. Changes we're going to be doing. Um, we will be doing an alpha as soon as we can. But from your point of view, because there's no group meeting sort of thing, it's not conducive to the way it should be for you to go through it as well. Whereas if we had a group of a lot of people, five, six, seven people, then there'd be a lot more. It's weird. We're talking too much in it. Um, Amen. Thank you, Wendy. Kettle Black. <clears throat> so, uh, so my apologies for that. I know that's something you like, but I was thinking about it. I thought, no, we'll carry on. And then the Lord really says about trying to do too much and just focusing on that. So we, we will be doing an alpha course again at the right time. Um, and so I think last year was the right time. 
obviously just because of common feelings and that. I think it's not now then we really need to focus on the church itself and getting people in and sorting that. So I just want to do that explain that. Thank you. The social events coordinator will be coordinating events for the fourth birthday of the church coming up at the end of the month. <laughs> and then the next meeting is here on Sunday the 23rd of August. Does anybody want to say about that thing for the fourth day? Does anybody want to comment on it? I've got any ideas? Oh, cool. So the bench coordinator has been planning already. I know. Calm down. <laughs> um, I'd just like to say that I am the social coordinator. I am here. Anyone has any ideas about what to think of any plans? I mean, I have one or two plans. May, uh, but I will discuss that with pastors and uh, I just want to praise the Lord for the, for the, for the people in this room. And a few weeks ago when I was here, I, uh, I heard church or no church, I will carry them. And I said, Pastor John, about it. And I know that I, I I know it's the right thing for us to focus on the church to get as as um, as described. I, I, I want to know more about where the scriptures are. That's where I'm lacking. And I have two wonderful pastors here that will with uh, me. I'm telling you, you want to come in, are. Well, they have more knowledge than I have of where the scriptures are. But in this room? Yes. Yeah. In the Bible, that's about it. Because, because of that precious book. Technically, the fourth birthday is two weeks today. Yeah. Not like Sunday, the Sunday. Yeah. 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 Who will take five? I'm, if I can, quickly, I'm going to try to find something that we, we've done before. And it's in line with what Caroline has been talking about. And uh, Caroline. I just want to show you this quick video because this is what the church has done the last couple of years and you were on about making the difference. Mm -hmm. 
it's like it's come off the spot and says, You've never seen such a serial picture like that. It's amazing that God used to take or two to bring that much joy in there. It's the gift, more than just a gift. It's the gift that comes with the gift. It's going to be an opportunity for a child to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's the best gift of all that's been coming part of God's family. Thank you. These people have the lives. They're giving their time. Families are giving boxes here. Who's there? Some the excited. It's off the charts. We're being so thankful for these all here. We couldn't do it without. We're going to be part of the ministry. And because of this, many children, like even me, I said, Jesus, as the Lord said, you're looking for children. children need more than anything. Mm -hmm. Love and faith, you know. See? And the priest, you brought us here. It's an opportunity to share your faith. Thank you for this ministry that is yours, that you use a shoebox gift to go around the world to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It starts with a simple shoebox gift, and from there, these gifts go around the world and are given to each child to get a pickup truck, to get a truck on the bus, to move on a taxi, cameras, and don't be as clear as whatever it takes to get these gifts into the hands of children. And that's all the great thing. And the children that receive the hopes, they have to go through a 12 lesson discipleship course. And these children that are missing their lives to Christ, and they have to spend their faith with other children. Honestly, the child competes in the greatest journey. They graduate and receive a certificate and a Bible in their own language. Mm -hmm. My name is Chisho Mina Alexander. I'm really a little girl in Cuba. One day I was driving and I wanted some very deep pants. And I asked my mother if she could buy them for me. She said no because she didn't have the money. So we received gift boxes. When I opened the box and saw the market, I was very excited. I learned about God through the books. Today, I pray that Jesus will come into my heart. I am very grateful to everyone, to God and to you all, for bringing me these books. This reports for all this opportunity to put a smile on a child's glass. To be able to get to know Jesus Christ. Make can then be the sparkle makers in the world. They're trained and equipped and go around and share their faith with others. And many times in the areas where it's all raised people, the Bible tells us the time is now. We have seen chances being tired. We have seen people being stressful. The mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes. Children are coming to Jesus, and the children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Christmas Day. These children around the world are being impacted by these simple shoe box gifts. One box can touch not just a child, but the whole family. So we need to keep packing those boxes and pray for the children that God will use this in a very special way. So thank you for being a part of it. God, thank you for asking for your friend. Well, not the way he recognized who that person was. That was Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham. And then um, the last two years, we have done an appeal here. The first year was pretty low, the second year was pretty dire. And that doesn't put us off. We'll be doing that again. If you have something you'd like to help out with, um, we'll, we'll help you with that because we know where to get. It's done through the Billy Gray ministry. 
Well, they just threw uh, what we call Samaritan's Purse, which is from good way support to the church. Um, but that is a specific appeal where you can actually put your own box and send it to them and you can put a photograph in of yourself. That, that's something that we've done the last two years. We'll be doing it again this year. Um, it's, it's not anything that you have to do. It's something that is what we want to do to get involved. That's fine. But um, when you were talking, that really came to... And today, I wasn't going to do it. Um, take five, I thought, we'll leave it this week. And um, now, now why? So that's something that will be... It, it actually comes up around probably next month, I think. We start collecting... In September, them. beginning of October, yeah. Yeah. And... Um, you can actually buy your own two box and pack your own stuff, or you can do it online and they do it for you. But um, we can talk about that more together and then um, present it to the church later on. Uh, yes, I can. You want to read it out of the Bible, and that's where it came from. Number Mm -hmm. The priestly blessing. I've got it. Hey? I've got it. What page is it? Oh, it's it's uh, Numbers chapter six, from verse twenty-four. Oh yeah, twenty-six. Yeah. Okay, let's carry on. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. They will put my name on the children of Israel. I will bless them. And always remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. We found we found it. There you go. There you go. Thank you for being part of our worship service today. We hope that you enjoyed it. Have a safe journey home and a peaceful and prosperous week. God bless you all. See you next week if you want to. David! Well, we don't want people that don't want to come, do we? I mean, look at Angel last week. Look at Angel last week. I wasn't sure whether she was coming or not, and she flew here. Yeah. I can't believe that. It's got a taxi. Yeah. That's, that's dedication. It is dedication. It is. I thought she forgot me this morning. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.